Welcome to the Trader Workstation Risk Navigator intro. Now the Risk Navigator is one of the coolest things. And let me apologize in advance for wasting the next, eh, let's call it 10, 15, 20 hours of your life. Now look, you may not do that, but if you're a nerd like me, it is a really, really cool thing to do. So let's jump right in. Let's talk about the features, what it's going to do, how it works. So basically, the Risk Navigator takes all of your positions and gives you data. And I love data. I love data. So here are just some of the highlights of what it gives you. We're going to be taking deep dives in this video and other videos about how to use it specifically. But what it's going to do is going to give you stuff like net Greeks. Combines up all your positions and says, this is how much delta you have. This is how much vega you have. This is how much theta. It could be very helpful to look at to make sure that you are in the right positions that you want to be. It'll then give you a portfolio risk graph. Now this is what everyone always jumps into first, and this is a really cool feature, is that it will take all of those positions, mash it all up into one position, and say, okay, this is how your portfolio should move if the S&P 500 goes up 2%. This is what should happen if it goes down 2%. Really cool, so you can go in and see, okay, what are the theoretical returns? And how does my risk graph overall look? Next, it's going to give you value at risk. Value at risk is basically a word for worst case scenario. What is the worst case scenario? Now, value at risk, we're going to get into that in a different video. We're going to talk about what it means. We're going to talk about how to look at it. But it's something that every single person should know. Where is my VAR? Where's my value at risk? If, if the whole thing blows up, where's my risk? Worst case scenario. Now, all of these, the first three are pretty standard. They're pretty standard. And the last one, what if scenarios? Yeah, this is where you're going to nerd out. <laughs> this is where you spend a lot of time. And it's really cool because you can go in and say, what if I added this position to my portfolio? How would that change my Greeks? How would that change my portfolio risk graph? How would that change my VAR? Or you can just do a blank portfolio and say, load, what if I built these 10 trades? What would the portfolio look like? As you can see, you can spend a lot of time on what if scenarios, but I find it very, very helpful when people are, are fairly new to options trading to be able to go in and, and put in a trade. How does this trade affect it? And then you say, okay, well, what if I, instead of doing two contracts, what if I did three? What if I did seven? What if I did three longs and one short? It's really cool because then you can really get to see how you can play with your overall portfolio risk graph. So let's start into how do you get there? How do you get there? So this is the Trader Workstation. And I put a big, nice red circle up there on the toolbar of Risk Navigator. Now, you may not see that on your toolbar. It's, it's a strange thing, but sometimes it's up there on some people's programs, sometimes it's not. Now, you can always add things to the toolbar. So you can go up and you can hit this little button right here. And this is how you add things to the toolbar. So if you want the risk navigator to be on your toolbar, go ahead. If you say, I don't want this to be on my toolbar or this, you can go in and take those off as well. Now, if it's not on your toolbar, you can also get through it through analytical tools. So if you click on analytical tools, a drop down is going to come. And again, sometimes some people may not see it in their list. In Interactive Brokers, at the bottom of every single little drop down menu, there is this little gray arrow down. It's basically saying, well, we have more choices, we're just not going to show them to you because you may not use it as much. The really cool thing about the Trader Workstation, it actually learns your preferences. The more you learn and use interactive brokers in the Trader Workstation, what happens is it starts hiding the things you don't use. Like if you've never used, you know, this time in sales, at some point it's going to go ahead and just remove that from the list unless you click the down arrow. As you can see, your risk navigator 
click on it and this little menu is going to open up over here and just choose open up wrist navigator so pretty simple on how to get to and when you get there it's going to open up and look like this so let's talk about basically the sections of this uh, the top section is going to be your positions it's going to be your positions and your greeks you can see here it's really cool you can say okay well my uh, autodesk position it's uh here's my delta dollars here's my delta here's my theta here's my vega here's my gamma it's all right there and then it also totals it up this top line totals up all of your greeks I really, we're going to talk about delta dollars. I really like to use that because basically it takes your delta times your position size and gives you your basic exposure. So this, this portfolio you can see is not very bullish. It's basically a neutral portfolio, which we should see down in the risk graph. And sure enough, that's what we see. We see a risk graph that is slightly bullish, but mostly sideways. So this is a portfolio on, hey, we're going to get some theta. We're going to get time decay. We're basically slightly bullish, trying to get time BK in this portfolio. And then the last one is the reports. Vela reports over here. We have a whole different video on these reports, how to run them, what they mean. There's a lot of them. You're going to go through a whole bunch of them and understand very few of them. <laughs> but you are going to understand the ones that are going to be important to you. So let's... Uh, Let's head into it a little bit deeper here. Let's talk about these reports. Um, some of the reports you can do, risk by position, risk by underlying, risk by industry. As you can see here, I really like these two. These two are my favorites. And pretty much I never click on anything else outside of that. Risk by underlying. Now, what this means by underlying, this will add all of your positions together. So if you had like a butterfly on Amazon and then you also had uh, a short put on Amazon, whatever. It's going to group those all together as one Amazon position. Now, if you choose risk by position, it's going to break them all out separately. As you can see here, a bunch of charts here, plot measures, you basically change how it plots the values. Underline, you can say all of them, or you can say, I just want to take a look at one. I just want to take a look at my lows position. And again, if I select that, only lows is going to be down here on this graph. And of course, the date. The date you want to select, what is the time frame of the risk graph that you're looking at. So these reports, as I said, we've got a whole session on how to read these reports, how to use them. Top one, Net Greeks positions. This is really just a great place to go see where you stand. Now at first, you are likely not going to have the delta dollars column. I highly, highly recommend you add this. The way you add this is you basically take your cursor and you hover anywhere up in the top. But wherever you hover, it's going to put the column in. So if you want delta, I usually put it right after, actually I put it right before delta. I would hover it right here, and I would hit the plus button, and I would add in delta dollars. You can see this here little report tells you, hey, these are your Greeks, here you go. Next one is the risk graph. Now the risk graph has a couple of metrics on it. And this is where I, I wish there was a little bit more customizable, but it's not. But it gives you a good idea of where to start. So you have your real line. This is the line that it's, this is the projected path of profit and loss based on the underlying market movement. So this real line is where you're gonna to wanna to focus on. This white line is where you wanna focus. It's going to tell you what happens if volatility rises or volatility falls. So you can see here this portfolio, the green line, will profit from a fall in volatility. So this portfolio is short volatility a little bit. However, if volatility rises, it is negative on this. This uh, profit comes down here at the top. And then the last one, confidence interval. This is basically three standard deviations. So it's saying, okay, we're planning out there being a three standard deviation move in your time frame that you chose, which again is the last one, the date. It's going to plot out three standard deviations, and those yellow lines are saying, okay, this is probably what you can count on being worst case scenario, three standard deviations. Now, look, we know it can always get worse than that. That's why we're going to you know, jump over to VAR. 
But when you take a look at a risk graph, you can say, okay, it looks like this portfolio has about 580, 600 bucks of max risk. Best case scenario, looks like it's going to be somewhere in here. S&P up somewhere between 1% to 4% during this time frame. So it gives you a visual representation of your positions all as one. So this was just a quick run through of all the different things, all the different sections of the risk navigator. We're going to have videos on, on each section, how to read them, how to use them, how to change them. But at this point, we really just want you to understand what the risk navigator is, how to open it, how to understand each window. And then from here on, we're going to go on to specialization. All right. Thanks, everyone.